Rare Panda is built on top of Apache Kafka protocol, which means porting and moving your Kafka connectors, producers, consumers are pretty straightforward. Simply configure and point them to Rare Panda cluster, they'll just work. The biggest difference between Rare Panda and Kafka is the implementation, and this decision sets Rare Panda apart with better performances on throughput and low latencies. Rare Panda choose C++ and C star framework as they give us better access to lower level controls, such as CPU and IO management for both memory and disk. We regularly run performance tests against Kafka. These two graphs caught my eye, and I think it can explain part of why Rare Panda can handle larger throughput compared to Kafka under the same hardware constraint. You see, when running applications on a computer, the CPU is in charge of the processing but it needs data in order for it to do that. So the faster we can get the data into it, the faster our computer is. Therefore, there are many caching mechanisms inside the computer in order to speed things up. Memory is the main temporary caching storage area where the CPU can quickly access the data and the instruction it needs for processing. So when a developer writes their application, they will have to instruct when to load claim part of the memory for it to load or write the data and release it when it's not needed so other program can use it. But let's face it, managing this memory can be complex and most of the locations are not memory intensive. The developer would be better off focusing on the program of what's trying to achieve than managing the memory themselves. If it's not done properly, there's a high chance of memory leak. That means a good chunk of memory will not get to be used, and over time, it's going to cause performance issues and ultimately crashes the program. I myself is also guilty of that too. And that's why developer uses techniques like garbage collections to automatically manage the memory for them. Kafka is Java-based, so it relies on JVM's garbage collection. The JVM runs the garbage collector that identify and deallocate unused memory periodically, depending on the versions and configurations of your JVM. When the garbage collector wakes up, it stops some of the running thread, meaning that now your cluster can only run on its 30, 60, 50, 80% capacity, or even put everything on hold. As data being created and destroyed during garbage collection, memory used to store the data can be fragmented, leaving small gaps of unused memory scattered throughout. Over time, these fragmentations can increase, resulting in decreasing system performances and increased memory usage. Whereas Red Panda manages its own memory, paired with Thread Per Core architecture, I did a video about it, I'm going to link it down below, but long story short, thread per core architecture is assigning each CPU core to its own dedicated thread for efficient parallel processing and avoid context switching. From the IO management perspective, Rependa will pre-allocate a fixed amount of memory for each core, and it's pretty smart as it automatically calculate the size of memory assigned based on your configurations and available resources. With Red Panda directly handling the memory, it does not need to wait for garbage collector to clean up the unused space. It can quickly free up the unused memory since with streaming platform, data are frequently vicked and recached. So you want these to be out of the way and ready for the next set of data as soon as possible. And because Red Panda manages within its allocated memory, it does not need to share it globally there's a lot less chance of data fragmentation. If you put both systems side by side, you see for Red Panda, there's no need to pause for garbage collection. And hence, this explains the ups and downs from the performance test graphs. These low throughput moments are a clear indications of major and minor garbage collections. Look, I'm not saying Java is slow. In fact, modern Java can perform well in most of the cases, but sometimes some tool just crush it in certain situations and better at getting specific job done. In the case of IO intensive streaming platform, Rependa implements with C++ can maximize the resource utilization and brings out great performances. And that reflects on our performance tests where you don't need as much resource when running Rependa with the same load. That explains why Rependa has a better number when it comes to tail 99 latencies. So if you like this kind of technical explainer video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.